Are you so consumed by your ADHD that you can't stand to listen to a song that's any longer than 59 seconds? Do you encompass all the worst and most abhorrent traits of the fan bases of every single extreme or heavy subgenre of music? Do you see yourself as so overly edgy and different that you deliberately listen to a genre of music that actively tries to appeal to as few people as possible? Well, it seems like grindcore is the perfect genre for you. Also, please stop watching YouTube and pawn some deodorant. But what is grindcore? Let me lay out an image for you. Imagine four cavemen who are overly excited and filled with a ridiculous amount of testosterone due to a successful mammoth hunt. Imagine they stumble across a drum kit, electric guitar, bass, microphone pedals, basically everything you need to play metal music. The chaos and absolutely foul sound that would ensue is essentially grindcore, so yeah, definitely give it a listen, trust me bro, it's good. Grindcore is an extreme fusion of heavy metal, specifically death metal and hardcore punk, that essentially just took all the most abrasive elements of the genres being made at this time and smashed them all together with the least care humanly possible. These elements include the more distorted instrumentation, speed and blast beats seen in hardcore punk, slapped together with growls, shouts and high pitched shrieks. When exploring grindcore vocals, think of a classically trained singer, and think of the exact opposite of that. That's grindcore singing. Another trait of grindcore is the micro song, which isn't some sort of strange substance related lifestyle and wellness hack promoted by people who look like this, but an incredibly short song, even shorter than punk. You may be thinking, oh, like a minute for a song, maybe minute 30 seconds? No, that would actually make sense. A grindcore band actually has the record for the shortest song, which on Spotify is four seconds, with about three of those seconds being completely silent. This may sound like an overly ridiculous outlier within the genre, but no, there are plenty of bands who create and release songs that are only a few bars in length. This all makes perfect sense when you actually listen to the music, and to be honest, 4 seconds is far too long. Although the songs are short, they still manage to fit a ridiculous amount of percussion into each song. This is achieved through the always delicious blast beat, which essentially involves the drummer smacking this, this and this at the same time very quickly. We almost forgot lyrics, and honestly, it's very easy to do so considering you will literally never understand a single lyric in a grindcore song. As grindcore directly splintered off from punk, a lot of the early themes replicate the ones seen in punk, leaning towards anarchism and anti-capitalism, with a surprising amount of early bands actually focusing specifically on animal rights. These lyrical themes have kind of shifted as the genre has developed. Many bands just spew out lyrics about the most disgusting sh oftentimes painted over with a satirical or humorous tone. Another key trait of grindcore is um this apparently. So how on earth did this happen? Some sort of big mistake? A series of small mistakes that eventually lead to a big mistake? Well it all began with hardcore punk, so I guess it's one of the two. Essentially proto grindcore is just hardcore punk and death metal, which has either been or will be covered to death on this channel, so it's best we start with somebody who sounds particularly grindy. Discharge's 1982 debut album, Hear Nothing, See Nothing, Say Nothing, would take the punk formula and push it to its absolute limit, creating some of the most extreme and ferocious music for the time period. This raw intensity alongside very short songs for the time laid the foundation for what grindcore would become in the future. America decided they also wanted to produce what Birmingham would sound like as a song, with the band Deep Wound following a similar formula to Discharge. You may think something this vile can only stem from hardcore punk, but no. The band Repulsion were creating a very similar thing, only taking more inspiration from more thrash and metal influences. They took thrash and pushed the envelope further, then a little bit further, and a bit more, until the entire thing fell off a cliff, which actually accurately describes what some of the music sounds like. Due to the band being kind of gross, no label was willing to sign them, meaning the distribution of their music was done entirely through underground demo tapes, which was actually very common for the genre, and kind of still is, only instead of demo tapes it's crusty bandcamp links with depraved, poorly drawn art splattered all over the page. Repulsion would build a fan base through these demo tapes, eventually leading to the release of their debut album in 1989, which would define the grindcore sound with its lime scale encrusted riffs and unsettling pace. Another precursor to grindcore, Siege, would follow a similar story. Siege would intentionally try and find the fastest as punk band just so they knew how fast and angry they had to be, not only to beat the band but to blow them out of the water. This, alongside a thick layer of high pitched screeching, came to define a lot of early grindcore. Specifically, the screeching became pretty standard technique for later grindcore. Similarly to Repulsion, Siege's music would primarily be shared through the distribution of crusty demo tapes. Luckily, one of these demo tapes made it across the ocean to a group of British teenagers who probably would have been better off if they had never heard it. This band is Napalm Death. Napalm Death would start their career off as a narco punk that was pretty typical for the UK at the time. This would shift into crust punk with the band beginning to introduce more elements of thrashcore and post-punk and legitimately began to describe their sound as Siege with Celtic Frost riffs. 
The band's style would fully shift into what is known as grindcore today when they hired a new drummer, but this was no ordinary drummer. This drummer consistently went at hyper speed, to the point where audiences weren't able to tell whether the band's new direction was a joke or not due to the novelty of the speed. So that was it, Napalm Death took their new drummer, placed it in a washing machine with their hardcore death metal and industrial influences alongside a brick and placed it on full speed, running with the sound from there. They also coined the term grindcore, with the grind section referring to its speed and core obviously referring to the hardcore element. Napalm Death would aptly sign to the label Earache Records and release what many see to be the most essential record in the distribution and popularity of grindcore, Scum. Scum would release in 1987, reaching relatively mainstream visibility, essentially just due to the novelty of the ridiculous speed utilised within the music. This short and strange flurry into the mainstream meant that grindcore had left the sweaty basement of gatekeepers and circle jerkers, allowing the style to be heard by many more people. This led to a small insurgence of grindcore bands forming out of the UK. These bands would include Carcass, Sore Throat and Extreme Noise Terror. The last of those three would especially leave a disgusting and stinky mark when they decided to yoink Napalm Death's drummer and push the genre even further. Grindcore continued to flourish with Napalm Death and Carcass continuing to sell hundreds of thousands of records, partly thanks to a Napalm Death song being featured in a Mortal Kombat game. Of course, America had also heard what Napalm Death had been doing, resulting in a flurry of Grindcore bands with names I cannot repeat on YouTube forming out the US. One band that formed out the US that's worth mentioning is Terrorizer, with their 1989 release being one of the best examples of early Grindcore created outside the UK. Unfortunately, the fact of the matter is, when some that was specifically created to be extreme and push the envelope becomes oversaturated with bands doing the exact same thing, the magic is kind of lost, leading to the pioneers venting their frustrations and in places distancing themselves from grindcore. Some bands, specifically Extreme Noise Terror, would completely disregard the label, preferring to refer to themselves as hardcore punk, whilst Napalm Death became frustrated and bored with the style due to oversaturation. This didn't kill off the genre, however as grindcore has continued, it's just become more extreme, vulgar and fast. This has led to a violent spew of subgenres that have shot off from grindcore Grindcore, some of which I cannot speak about on YouTube, those ones are pretty obvious. Regardless of that, here are some that are worth talking about, so... Subgenre Breakdown Power Violence is a subgenre that takes direct influence from Napalm Death, although actively avoids the heavy metal aspects of the style. They essentially create a brand of hardcore punk that focuses on speed, bizarre timings, and constant tempo changes, with many of the songs lasting less than 30 seconds. Bands worth checking out include Zulu, Nails, and Drop Dead. Blackened Grindcore is essentially exactly what it sounds like. The musical stylings of Grindcore, with the treble, heavy, disgusting tone of black metal, creating something that wouldn't sound out of place in a torture chamber. Notable bands include Anal Naklath, and Impaled Nazarene. Deathgrind is one of the more common subgenres and is essentially used to describe grindcore bands who focus more on the death metal influence within the genre than the hardcore punk. This has either stemmed from death metal bands introducing grind elements or just grindcore bands who prefer to add a bit more complexity to their music. Bands include Asuk and The Exhumed. Electro Grind stemmed from former members of Napalm Death going on to experiment with more electronic musical elements. This subgenre includes elements of digital hardcore, gabba and distorted drum machines, but still stays true to form with their gurgling voice vocals which are at times pitch shifted, and finally, noise grind which should probably be avoided at all costs. Although the short lived popularity of grindcore was a bit of a flash in the pan, and likely more thanks to the shock value than actual mainstream appeal, grindcore has remained a genre with an active community and thriving scene of underground bands. This has even extended to countries like Singapore with the band Wormrock. Grindcore fans remain very passionate about their genre, which I, as a musical scientist, have come to the conclusion that this is only because the songs are so ridiculously short that grindcore listeners don't even realise what they are listening to until it's over.